Welcome back to Naomi 90s Minute. Every week we look back at a culturally relevant show, movie, or piece of pop culture that probably helps stoke the algorithm. This week, because it's still kind of dead in theaters, because it's the time of year for that, slash the strike from last year, we're looking back at one of the best Danny Boyle films from the 90s, Train Spotting. Train Spotting is a 1996 British black comedy based off of a novel by the same name, directed by the director of Slumdog Millionaire, starring young Obi Wan Kenobi, Buttons from Our Flag Means Death, Sherlock Holmes from Elementary, Doctor Hunt from Grey's Anatomy, Rumpelstiltskin slash Mr. Gold from Once Upon a Time, and the voice of Princess Merida in Brave. Well, the story takes place in Scotland, revolving around 26-year-old unemployed heroin addict Mark Rantboy Renton, who lives at home and hangs out taking drugs with his friends Simon Sickboy Williamson, Daniel Spud Murphy, and their dealer. His other friends, Agro alcoholic Francis Franco Begbie and footballer and speed user Tommy McKenzie, who both abstain from using heroin, warn Renton about his drug habit. So Renton tries to quit by weaning himself off using opium suppositories, but he has the runs and has to relieve himself in the most disgusting toilet in all of Scotland, then imagines himself being swallowed up by it while retrieving the suppositories. Renton, now free of his heroin habit, attempts to lead a better life, which involves him shooting at strangers' dogs with a BB gun with Sick Boy, giving spud amphetamines for a disastrous job interview, and stealing a sex tape of Tommy and his girlfriend. Eventually, he notices a rise in libido, so he goes to a nightclub and goes home with a girl named Diane. In the morning, he's horrified to learn that she's an underage schoolgirl, who then blackmails him into having a relationship. After Renton, Sick Boy, and Spud fail to reintegrate into society, they relapse into heroin, this time dragging Tommy with them, who was depressed after his girlfriend broke up with him for losing their sex tape. Sick Boy's daughter ends up dead from negligence while they shot up, but they still continue to use. Then, Spud and Renton get nicked for shoplifting while Spud goes to jail for six months. Renton avoids jail by entering a drug rehabilitation program which fails and he ends up overdosing so upon release from the hospital his parents lock him in the childhood room and force him to quit cold turkey while going through it he hallucinates sick boy's dead baby crawling up the walls onto the ceiling and twisting its head around finally he was released from his room after getting a negative hiv test he visits tommy who has become heavily addicted and tested positive for hiv renton then leaves to london to start a new life at diane's suggestion and is doing well until sick boy and begby show up and get renton fired from his job fleeing from the cops back to edinburgh they arrive back just in time for Tommy's funeral, who has died of aid-related toxoplasmosis. Following the funeral, Sick Boy ropes Spud, Renton, and Begbie in on a deal to turn around two kilos of pure heroin for four times the profit, each making 4,000 pounds on the sale. While celebrating at a bar, Begbie gets into a drunken brawl, and Renton realizes he needs to get out of the situation, so that night he grabs the money and leaves the other three behind, leaving Spud his share in a locker. The movie ends on Renton promising the viewer he's going straight and he's going to live a boring regular life like the rest of us. And that's train spotting in a namely 90s minute. More or less. Join us again next Tuesday for another namely 90s minute. Remember, you can always hear these a day early in full episodes of namely 90s on all major podcasting platforms. And most of the small ones, too. Please subscribe and do all the other YouTube things. Bell ringing, share like a scribe, that sort of stuff. And we'll catch you next time.